Hello, I am Luxbrush. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 4, Episode 21. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Okay, now I'm actually like I'm testing my audio equipment. Why are the reserves newly formed? You think they would have had them before? Otherwise, why on earth does anybody go to Wonderbolt Academy? Because there's only a handful of Wonderbolts. My theory is that they're newly reformed because they wanted to give a reason for Rainbow Dash to be a part of the Wonderbolts without actually being a Wonderbolt so she can still have her dream so they don't have to finish her arc. So she can be a backup Wonderbolt and we don't have to have anything else bad happen to the current Wonderbolts. Though it would be nice if this whole reserve force had come up when Rainbow Dash first went to Wonderbolt Academy. It kind of makes more sense for there to be a Wonderbolt Academy if there's a Wonderbolt reserve. And they didn't really say it was newly formed. They could have just said, well, you're going out for the reserves, you know, without having to say newly formed. They could have just left out newly formed and everything would have still gone right with the episode. Why did they have to add in newly formed? Because they wanted to give it a sense of immediacy and urgency. A nice reference back to the beginning of Season 3 with Rainbow Dash going, You freak out over tests! Come on! I mean, you made a whole musical about it! I know, I, I enjoyed that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, she did. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, showing us that, hey, wait a minute, people should have heard Fluttershy sing before. <laughs> but, oh well, moving on to Twilight and her checklists. We love her checklists. And who needs a checklist for studying about studying methods? Only Twilight! Y you've never had a teacher go over what you should do for good study habits? Uh, probably, but I didn't retain any of them because my study habits were kind of like skim over the materials because I paid attention in class, so whatever was in class was probably on the test and I usually made it past pretty easily. <laughs> so yeah, I probably heard the good study habits but never really retained them. <laughs> Well, I had classes where we had a checklist of things to do in order to pass this class, and it sounded a lot like Twilight's List. <laughs> but uh, reading, highlighting, I marker in book, bad! <laughs> ah, Twilight being a teacher again. That's a good upgrade, because she went from being a student, and now she's a teacher of people. That's a nice touch. Well, she was technically teaching in the Twilight Time episode because she was helping them with their particular areas of interest. But that looked a lot less dry than the history of the Wonderbolts as presented by a flashcard and chalkboard. Though I like how they managed to fit in a lot of backstory in the background of this episode about how things actually going on while they're focusing on teaching Rainbow. Speaking of teaching Rainbow, Rainbow is one of those students <laughs> That's like, yeah, I don't need to learn. I'm I'm good at learning. And then we get to your highlights again and a centerfold joke, really? I know there's centerfolds in sport magazines and stuff like that, but I don't think jeez. <laughs> Certain bronies are gonna jump to conclusions on that one. <sighs> yeah, and that one totally went over my head mainly because I was like, it's bad enough you're highlighting the book, but you're scribbling in it too. <laughs> At least use some note paper instead. Ah, uh, yes, the fear that was embedded in you from a young age by a librarian. <laughs> and there was me who never experienced that. I just naturally kind of semi took care of books unless they were mine and depending on the book. Like current books I have, like I'm never touching these. They're not study materials, but any books I was like study materials, I would take okay care of them and I would make notes, but sometimes I would have to like mark the page in some way or other. But you would look at that and go, you did what? <laughs> yeah, that's what post-it notes are for. And highlighting never really helped me. I did better if I copied the sections I would have highlighted out into my notes. Because I retain stuff better if I handwrite it as opposed to typing it. Which is very annoying in the electronic age. <laughs> uh, I retain stuff better if I speak it and have it written down for me by the wonderful technology we have now. Thank you, Google. <laughs> uh, I really love the creativity of the transitions in this episode. All of them were unique and very themed to the episode. They've never really done this kind of transitioning before, and I liked it. <laughs> how we had the highlighter move across the screen, how we had pencils drawing it out and changing, or the pages flipping of a notebook. 
They're all really nice transitioning animations, and it just does it throughout the episode. It was nice to see the tension between Twilight and Rainbow Dash in regards to setting resolved so quickly with Fluttershy intervening, because they very easily could have made this whole episode about the two of them fighting over study habits instead of trying to work through different study methods to help Rainbow Dash. Yeah, I like that aspect too, how everyone had a different study method. And I guess Rarity's learning style was learn through your interests. Because it can't really be learned through fashion, so I'm guessing it translates to learn through your interests. So if you're interested in this, figure out some way to theme the thing you're trying to study about through those interests. Well, it could also actually be learn through fashion, because fashion through the ages can actually be an interesting study to see how things changed over time, as technology changed, as culture changed. Mm -hmm. And how itchy the fabrics were. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a running joke throughout most of that. But jumping back again, jumping back a little bit to the expression on Spike's face when he first came in playing those drums was just silly. It was like, I'm really getting it happy. Yeah. <laughs> also, impromptu music session while we're learning about history. <laughs> yes, which was really, really fun and cute. And if that kinetic motion had actually gotten Rainbow Dash involved in the learning. That would have been awesome, because kinetic is actually a learning type. I'm more of an auditory slash, um, uh, what's the term? Maybe it is under kinetic, but um, I like to do what I'm learning. Yeah, that's, that's more kinetic. So if I'm doing it while you're telling me about it, I usually learn better than if I'm just being told about it or if I'm just doing it. Also, lectures, poor Rainbow Dash. <laughs> Yeah, Twilight should know that Rainbow Dash doesn't have that kind of attention span. You'd think she would know by now that Rainbow Dash does not have an attention span long enough to sit somewhere and listen to something unless she's really involved in it. Like, I don't know, Daring Do. <laughs> so, yeah, it should have been obvious almost from the beginning that Twilight's study methods were not suited to Rainbow Dash. Yeah, especially since Rainbow Dash gets bored very easily. And Twilight's trying to figure out something. Let's try flashcards. And they end up outside. And Rainbow starts spitballing the flashcards. And Twilight tries to catch her and catches her. After Rainbow just cowers back from Twilight's anger at almost being shot in the eye with a spitball, all I thought was when she was peeking over the, the sign, I was like, ooh, Kilroy! <laughs> <laughs> or, oh look, Kilroy! I also like how Twilight drove home how little she knew by going, POP QUIZ! <laughs> the sad part there was that Rainbow Dash thought she passed. What kind of answers were those? <laughs> oh yeah, she was hungry. <laughs> Why are they all breakfast related? Growl. That explains everything. <laughs> also, when Twilight was quizzing her, she sounded a lot like a quiz show host. I felt like answering with, Who is Alex Trebek? <laughs> <laughs> and then they start arguing, things start escalating. And then surprisingly, we have Fluttershy stepping in to calm things down. She's come a long way. She really has, but we've seen even in the season one premiere that she can speak up when she needs to. But it feels more here, because it doesn't take her so many times to go, Girls! She only does it, like, I think twice before she's like, Girls! Yeah, and it was nice that that de-escalated so quickly. I think it's mostly because of Fluttershy and how long everyone's been friends that they realized, yeah, we're being stupid. Thanks, Fluttershy. <laughs> and speaking of slightly, I hate to say it, but stupid things, that play. Ouch. <laughs> also, what does it say that Angel is playing Celestia? It almost kind of, kind of worries me. <laughs> uh, would you rather Angel have played Luna? I don't know. I can't see Angel playing anyone <laughs> other than Angel. <laughs> Also, Spike is the director. The struggling director. Quite. I'm not sure which was worse, this or Sweetie Bells. <laughs> At least we didn't have to listen to any bad dialogue this time. Advantage to having the animals perform it. And it took me a second viewing to get the joke about Spike having to push Gummy on stage. I'm like, oh yeah, Gummy doesn't move much. So him in a play kind of just doesn't work. I just realized something. Uh, why none of those playing a unicorn but Applejack's an Earth Pony? Hmm. <laughs> Couldn't you have used Aloysius? Oh wait, he could play. No, he's the he's the props man. <laughs> oh, well, it doesn't match up. Okay, Tank was playing a Pegasi, but both 
Opal and Angel were playing Alicorns, and Aloysius was a stagehand. And moving on to Pinky and her 90s rap video. Correction, 90s educational rap video. They wanted to be hip with it back then. <laughs> uh, I was actually laughing during that. It wasn't actually painful to me, but I just went, oh my god, they got it down to the detail of it being on VHS. I know, it was like, wow, this is like, just... Wow, it's amazing because none of it's sticking. <laughs> What's really funny is I retained the exact same information Rainbow Dash retained. Something, 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 make noises. <laughs> That's about what I got. I loved how it also continued throughout the episode with little things like, Ka! Pinky, stop rapping! <laughs> Andrea Lippman, the voice actor for Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy, must have had so much fun doing that. And moving on to Rarity's learning method again. At the point where everyone was saying, look at us, my brain turned that over to, one of us, one of us. <laughs> Which kind of works for her wanting to become a Wonderbolt. Yeah, since they were all being Wonderbolt figures, but it was kind of like, you will be assimilated. <laughs> and Rarity's expression when Applejack, kind of off the side, calls fashion nonsense was priceless. It was like, Urgh. I really enjoyed this episode, just all the little things just made me smile. And moving on to Rainbow's flight, all the details in this episode, it's like we're showing us how to learn like Rainbow Dash does, because there's details everywhere in the episode that if you're paying attention, you'll pick up on. Like, you'll notice everything Rainbow Dash pretty much noticed, except for the extreme details. When, when Tyler and Rainbow Dash are talking in the sky and they pan down and show you what's going on, on the ground, you can actually see some of the details that Rainbow Dash picks up on if you're paying attention. Yeah, well, I noticed the girls walking out of Sugar Cube Corner, but I don't think that shot was tight enough for us to see what type of cakes they had been eating. And I did notice Big Mac making the sale to Filthy Bridge. It's probably because I couldn't show all the details and I didn't want the conversation interrupted by a yup. And the episode just seems to be about the fact that Rainbow Dash learns details because she has to pay attention when she's flying to pretty much everything around her and she just kind of automatically logs in. It's probably one of the reasons she is a really good flyer. Because she can keep track of so many things at once while she's flying. Yes, because for a second when she shoved Twilight, I was annoyed with her. I'm like, okay, I know you're upset, but do we really need to get physical about it? This is a kid's show. That's exactly what I thought. And then, helicopter? An Earth Pony helicopter. <laughs> Though it wouldn't make sense for a Pegasus to be in a helicopter, but hey. <laughs> it could have been a unicorn. And I like the touch of the cloud becoming a rain cloud when Rainbow Dash lays on it depressed. <laughs> it, was, it was a very visual indication of her mood, and also I think it gives hints back to how Pegasus weather magic works. Hmm, didn't think of it that way. And Pinky, once again, was a good background Pinky. <laughs> she was supportive, she was crazy in just the right way, but she was also intelligent about it. So yeah, good background Pinky. <laughs> well, this whole group has been friends with Twilight long enough that they should understand the importance of tests, and also understand that you don't just dismiss somebody else's fears. Yep, definitely shows that they've grown a lot over the seasons. And moving on to people playing people again, I find it kind of funny that Fluttershy played Celestia and Rarity played Luna because it hit me the fact that, wait a minute, that's exactly what was in the play because Angel Bunny is Fluttershy's and Opal is Rarity's. <laughs> so that kind of matches up. All I was thinking is, wow, with the rainbow style Celestia mane, she looks a little bit like the McDonald's toy. <laughs> oh yes, that whole rainbow powered thing. Apparently that's what's in the box. Who knows exactly what's in the box? The shadow knows. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would seem strange for it to be another rainbow because that's what we had before we had a box. <laughs> we had the elements of harmony, they made a rainbow. Uh, maybe it's a locket with a rainbow inside of it. <laughs> oh, yes, because let's just steal more from Gen 1. <laughs> uh, moving back to that scene, how did they get the entire town to get involved? It's Ponyville. Every pony is friends with every pony and is very supportive. And, you know, all of that was organized off screen. She could have flashed the wings and gone, As Princess Twilight, I humbly request. <laughs> uh, as always, her actual princesshood is off screen. 
Uh, I'm calling in favors. You don't need any favors from us, princess. We'll gladly do it for you. Good, because this is off screen. No one will know. <laughs> and going back to Gen 1 again, I thought it was a nice touch that it was uh, General Firefly who was oh, part yeah. of the history of the Wonderbolts. I remember reading that was pointed out. Even I watched that was like, I completely forgot about it. You know, considering that Lauren wanted Firefly for the series and couldn't get her, and so instead we made she made up Rainbow Dash, who is an excellent character in her own right. It's pr the reason they probably could get her is, um, get the name is because it's for a male pony now, apparently. In general doesn't necessarily mean male. Yeah, but they pointed it out several times that it was a male. At least that's what I got from the episode. Though there are instances where it was a female, so... Fair enough. In the original, there were no male ponies in until the big brother ponies showed up. Which makes it a little awkward to explain the baby ponies. <laughs> it's magic! <laughs> oh god, there's fan fictions in that. <laughs> I want to know why Rainbow Dash was the only one taking the test. Wouldn't... Since it's a classroom setting, every pony be taking the test at the same time. Unless each Wonderbolt candidate, depending on their rank, gets scheduled their own test. Because Rainbow Dash was one of the higher candidates, so she may have gotten a different time slot. True. But I want to know, okay, with this whole Earth Pony, Pegasus, Unicorn, Protection Alliance. Okay, so for the Pegasi, it's the Wonderbolts. Pretty much all the palace guards we've seen have been Pegasi. I've seen mostly unicorns myself, actually. I guess you just pick up on different things. Yeah, but still, you don't see earth ponies in the royal guards. I bet you if we look, we can find them. Though they might be animation errors. <laughs> yeah, so we have the Wonderbolts, which is a Pegasus specific protection force. What ranks did the unicorns and the earth ponies form? Mm. Oh, and what awesome thing did the earth ponies figure out how to do? Because so often it feels like, oh yes, the pegasus can fly and do weather magic, and the unicorns have magic. You're an earth pony, what do you do? By the looks of it, build stuff. Because we have helicopters, we have that flying device Pinky came up with. We also have hard-working ponies like Applejack who do stuff. So as a lot of people surmise, or headcanon-wise, they probably figure that they're the major drivers of industry. Probably, because they don't have magic to do things for them, and they don't have the speedier transportation of being able to fly. I'm definitely not knocking the earth ponies, it just, sometimes it feels like, oh, magical creature, magical creature, pony. <laughs> yeah, the show doesn't spend a lot of time giving us a lot of focus on the uniqueness of earth ponies other than Pinkie Pie and her family. They are just crazy. <laughs> I would definitely, definitely not want to meet Mod Pie in an alley and have her be angry at me. <laughs> no one would hear from me ever again. <laughs> and I couldn't even tell if she was angry at me. I would just be a spot on the concrete. <laughs> oh, hello! <laughs> oh, hi, Mod. What's that? Uh, Boulder found a stain <laughs> in the concrete. <laughs> <laughs> he likes stains. It was nice to see Twilight using her wings more and actually getting some real flying in. Yeah, I was thinking about bringing that up as a point, is this is definitely one of the episodes where, oh wait, she needs to use her wings, let's write that in. And so often it feels like, okay, the animators remembered to put the wings there, but the writers didn't remember to ever write her flying. Overall, I did enjoy this episode. It was a little predictable in the way it was going, that, okay, Rainbow Dash needed to study for a test, Rainbow Dash and Twilight are not compatible in terms of their interests, which means their study habits would not be compatible. Rainbow Dash would have trouble learning it. They'd spend most of the episode figuring out a way to get Rainbow Dash engaged so that she could learn the material. There was an episode of Disney's Weekenders that did the same thing. And I'm sure there was an episode of Disney's Recess that did the same thing. Uh, partially with going over the different learning styles, it almost seemed like this episode was more a lesson for teachers and parents rather than the intended viewing audience. I mean, different people learn different ways and, okay, maybe I'm a little naive, but that was kind of an understood in my school that we all got things differently, <laughs> but maybe it's not understood and that's why it shows up in so many children's shows. I didn't really see the predictability of the episode, really, because I was just having so much fun watching it. I really enjoyed this episode from beginning to end. 
The transitions were awesome, the animation was well done, and the script felt smooth and flowed from scene to scene for me. The fact that we got more backstory and world building just made it even more of an awesome episode. And I think the fact that you say the lesson seems to be more for the parents. I don't know. Some kids don't realize that other kids learn differently than them because they are so focused on themselves that they think everyone learns like they do or everyone does things they do or they think their way of learning is the absolute best way of learning. So eh, I disagree with you on that point. But overall, the episode was awesome to me. <laughs> this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 4, Episode 21. Testing, testing, one, two, three. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing or leaving a comment below. Testing, testing, one, two, three, is any pony out there? If you'd like to keep track of the progress of these videos, you can follow Lux on Tumblr, where he's also agreed to answer questions. To see high-resolution versions of Lux's artwork, check him out over on DeviantArt. Links in the description.